With that, I mean, a, a good death needs three things. It needs equipment, it needs medication, and it needs um, the staff to administer it. So in terms of equipment, uh, a few quick questions. Do you have enough syringe drivers in the NHS to deliver medications to keep people comfortable when they're passing away? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, there was a challenge raised about this um, about eight days ago, and we re resolved that actually it wasn't so as big a challenge as as was made public, and we've we've resolved that. So yes, um, right now we do. And the second one is with that. That's to, the syringe drive is to deliver medication, particularly things like midazolam and morphine. Um, do you have any precautions put in place to make sure we have enough of those medications to be delivered? Yes. And we've got a big project to make sure that um, th those sorts of medications, as well as uh, the ITU medications that I spoke about earlier, that the supply chains, the global supply chains for those medicines are, are clear. Um, they are, in fact, th those medicines are made in a relatively small number of factories around the world. So it is a delicate supply chain and we are uh, in uh, contact with the whole supply chain. And in line with that, morphine is currently prescribed per patient. The reason to do that is to stop it being abused. So I have to prescribe it for Mr. Hancock. However, in this situation, if you're going into a healthcare home, um, you may not want to waste precious things like morphine. Have you considered relaxing the laws around morphine prescribing for doctors and healthcare professionals so that there isn't waste? That's something that we keep under review. I've looked at that particular point to reduce wastage of key medicines and it's something that the supply chain uh, the supply team sorry in um, uh, in the department and uh, the clinical team uh, talk about all the time I don't know if that's JVT's part of the clinical team and he may want to say more thank you I have nothing really to, nothing really to add on that okay. this is a drug that causes respiratory distress. It makes it hard to breathe. It gives you the symptoms that have been alleged to be those of COVID-19. And it has been used as a treatment for COVID-19 by the National Health Service in Britain. And what goes on the death certificate at the end of this story, COVID-19. And during the pandemic, there are some key people, uh, one of them has just left office, who um, uh, have expedited this process, who have ordered additional doses of midazolam, for example, as I mentioned earlier, um, two million doses, by the way. And they have used the pandemic to uh, increase the number of deaths significantly. It's encouraged doctors to end patients' lives prematurely without their consent and without their knowledge. Patients are usually sedated with morphine and midazolam via the use of a syringe driver and are deprived of nutrition and fluids until they eventually die from starvation or dehydration. Involuntary euthanasia en masse. About the midazolam that's been purchased from France and the, the huge amounts and where it's gone and we're actually following that up now with our barrister and Matt Hancock. That's the kind of thing we want on this page. Did you all come out when the do not resuscitate order was on the elderly and the elderly were being euthanized? Yes, they were in the care homes and hospitals when the sales of morphine and midazolam during that first lockdown went through the roof and it states there's all government documents how we purchased all of the midazolam that France had where's the police investigation for the midazolam sales and how many of our elderly were given this cocktail because it's used in end-of-life care anesthesia um, yes and the sales went up where are the cops investigating that mm. Nowhere has done an absolutely spectacular job getting to the bottom of what she said to me um, right at the beginning. She believed to be evidence that they were bumping off people in care homes using midazolam. Well, a few days after it was confirmed that we can now prove the same kind of bulletproof correlations again and again between the death spikes in the care homes and the administration of midazolam as we can 
with the COVID vaccines and the supposed COVID death spikes. Since that happened, Hancock's resigned. It's about a drug called uh, midazolam, which is used in um, the execution process in the United States. And it's a sedative which, if given in big enough amounts, will kill you. And the UK government in the spring of 2020 stockpiled years, years of supply of this midazolam. And it was used on old people in the April period and before enough, but crucially in that April period. It was used on old people in unprecedented amounts. That's why they stockpiled it, because they that's what they were going to do. And vast numbers of old people died. And what went on their death certificate when they died of murder? COVID-19. Policino said, uh, Midazolam depresses respiration and it hastens death. It changes end-of-life care into euthanasia. This is the very drug they stockpiled in the same period. Matt Hancock, the health secretary in Britain, who uh, ordered vast amounts of an end-of-life drug called midazolam and then used it in quantities never seen before. And all these old people in the care homes and elsewhere that it was used upon were said to have died of COVID-19 and not the midazolam. And uh, that was called the first wave. Now that I know what's going on with elderly and disabled and syringe drivers, that means a totally different thing to me now, despite having a good experience in the past. That means something totally, totally different to me now. And if you don't know what I mean about what's going on with elderly and disabled people and syringe drivers, you will do. There, are, there, there will be nurses, doctors, consultants, healthcare assistants right now that know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you are complicit. You are complicit in something very, very sinister. And it will be coming out. It will be. The public will know. You know what I'm talking about. Um, all I'll do is I'll leave you with um, something to research, if I may. I know that um, we need to be careful what we say. Yes, please. please. If we search the drug with that land. Yeah, let's leave that. We're not a medical show, so we don't talk about that. But thank you for bringing it up. Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, just to really about um, the use of the land. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. I've just said we're not a medical show, so we can't do that. So anything else you want to talk about? No, I just want to talk really about the, the loss of our loved ones. Good, we can talk about that. And I think it's, um, yeah, something a bit more sinister's gone on. Mm. Well, I, I think there's very sinister in a sense that, that they didn't care. For example, if you were in a care home, they let you die, they put a no resus on you, they didn't send doctors and they didn't bring ambulances and they didn't even try it's ventilators, they just let them die. It's not, it's not that easy to die, actually. It's not that easy to die. And therefore, search Medazalan. Okay, I've asked you three times not to, sir, so we'll move on. Thank you, mate. Okay, I appreciate it. We're not talking medical stuff on here, but I appreciate that, and you can talk about anything within the rules. Now, I'm encouraging everybody, if you have evidence of a crime, and we all do, to bring it with you. Anything you want. Freedom of information requests. Uh, Evidence that Madazalam has been re has been misused for euthanasia. Anything, if you can make it personal against these criminals and tie somebody on a personal level to it, fantastic. These and this is the information we need to bring. We are going to lay it at the feet in a symbolic gesture to the police. Mr. Hancock and all of your mates and Mr. Fauci and Gates and all of you people, you psychopaths. You must go before Nuremberg type trials. You must be jailed for the rest of your life. And we, the people, must not rest until you do.